My dearly beloved, in Christ, there are many topics that present themselves to us in today's gospel, and I would like to choose two to comment upon. The first is the institution of the sacrament of penance. Our Lord, on the night of his resurrection, said to the apostles, Peace be to you. And then he said again, Peace be to you, whose sins you shall forgive, they are forgiven, whose sins you shall retain, they are retained. Most of the sacraments, we do not know exactly at what point Christ instituted them. We do not have the words of institution in Scripture. But we do, of course, for the Holy Eucharist, given to us at the Last Supper, and the Sacrament of Penance, instituted on the night of the Resurrection. And I find it very interesting that our Lord preceded the institution of the sacrament of the Holy Eucharist with those words, peace be to you, repeated. And what beautiful words those are. They remind us of words of our Lord to his apostles at the Last Supper when he said, my peace I leave with you, not as the world gives do I give to you. Because the world cannot give true peace. And notice how those words, peace be to you, precede the institution of the sacrament of penance. Because it is a sacrament of peace. It is a sacrament which, by receiving devoutly, we gain that wonderful peace of soul that the world cannot give. And only our Lord gives that true peace of heart, which really is a prelude to everlasting peace in heaven. It's a beautiful words. We say them at the conclusion of the administration of the sacrament of baptism. The last thing the priest says at the end of a baptism is, Vadi in pacia dominus sit tecum, amen. Go in peace, and may the Lord be with you. What, again, what beautiful words these are, to go in peace. And indeed, we find that peace of heart, that peace of soul in the church, at Holy Mass, in Holy Communion, and really in all of the exercises of our faith, but in a particular way, when we receive devoutly the sacrament of penance. What a joy it is for us to be able to go to confession and know that our sins are forgiven if we have done our part to prepare well, to confess properly. As the catechism says, to confess our sins humbly, sincerely, entirely. The three qualities of a good confession, humble, sincere, entire. And to realize that by doing so, we are gaining a, an assurance of the forgiveness of our sins and peace of soul. So let us have great confidence in this sacrament. Receive it often. Do not allow the devil to cause you to put off confession. Those little doubts that come in your mind when you're thinking of going to confession. The devil's way of getting us to put off confession or not to receive it frequently. We should go to confession often. Receive frequently the sacraments of penance and the Holy Eucharist. For these sacraments, more than anything else, bring to the heart, the soul, that peace which our Lord gives. His peace, which is far different from the false peace of the world. So that's the first lesson of today's gospel. This wonderful peace, which comes from living a God-centered life and receiving these sacraments that our Lord has instituted. Another thought, another theme from today's gospel has to do with St. Thomas. And we know that St. Thomas doubted. Our Lord appeared on the evening of his resurrection to the apostles, and Thomas was not there at the time. He was out on an errand. And when he came back, the other apostles were saying to him, we have seen the Lord. And they told him how they had seen and no doubt touched the holes in his hands and feet made by the nails. 
And he said, unless I can touch them myself, I will not believe. So Thomas here gives us a bad example of doubting, not accepting the word of our brethren. But he made up for it the following Sunday, low Sunday, when our Lord appeared again. And he said those beautiful words that we repeat or should repeat every day during the elevation of the host at the consecration of the Mass, my Lord and my God. What a beautiful prayer and one that we can repeat often. When you come into our Lord's presence in the church, my Lord and my God, an act of faith in his presence. But in particular, I would like to draw from this lesson, this story of St. Thomas doubting, how we must be careful to not allow doubts into our mind. The devil would like to get us just to begin to doubt our faith or some aspect of our faith. And we must be very wary of these doubts. Do not entertain them. Reject them at once. Make an act of faith. Make frequent acts of faith. But doubts, if the devil knows if he can get us to at least begin to doubt, then he can, he has an opening and he can cause more of a doubt and more of a doubt. And then a person may end up losing his faith altogether. So be wary of these doubts. Just make that profession of faith as St. Thomas did, my Lord and my God. I believe that thou art here in the Blessed Sacrament. I believe everything that your church teaches, my Lord and my God. So don't allow doubts about your faith to enter into your mind. Reject them at once. Make a firm act of faith, frequent acts of faith and realize the danger of beginning to doubt. The devil knows if we could just get us to start to admit a doubt, a little bit of a doubt, then he has an opening. So let us learn that lesson also from today's gospel. The beauty of our faith, the joys of our faith, the peace that comes from living our faith. What a gift, our precious faith how so many souls in the world are without it and are lost, wandering around, searching for peace and not finding it. True peace, the only true peace, is found here at the feet of the tabernacle, at the foot of the tabernacle, receiving our Lord, receiving the sacraments, attending the holy sacrifice of the Mass and firmly believing in Him and in everything his church teaches. That is what brings true peace to heart and soul. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen.